this week, I have such a treat for you. And that is this weekly energy. So pull out your planners. And this is a great time to actually sit and plan the rest of your week and to see what is coming up in the astros, astrals and what is coming up in the day to day. So we kind of go early in the week, middle of the week, end of the week. And this is just kind of a preview of what you can expect energetically this week and how it's going to apply to your life. I felt like after recording this weekly, I'm recording the intro after, uh, after recording this weekly, I was like, wow, that really is like not only astrologically what is going on, but I just felt like this week is really important for a lot of people that I wanted to share. So this is what you would normally expect to see on Patreon at the pumpkin tier and up. So that's like the middle tier that I offer. Um, so I wanted to share this not only because a lot of you have asked like to see what's up with the Patreon, what's in it, what's what do I get if I join and these are readings that go out every single week on Patreon from May 2021, which was the launch of the Patreon. I have never missed a weekly ever. So you can even go back on the Patreon. If you join, you get access to the full library of everything I've ever made there. And if you go back, uh, you can actually look at like certain weeks of your life and see what was going on with like tarot and astrology. Mostly it's just tarot, but sometimes when there is something significant with astrology, I'll talk about it like I did this week, which you'll hear in just a second. But basically, this is just like a sample. This is the weekly energy that went out to Patreon yesterday at the start of the week. But this is like this is that but this is just a sample of if you decided to come and join the Patreon what you could expect every single week. Usually they get uploaded on Sundays, sometimes Monday, but uh, it's mainly just here to help you plan your week to kind of get a week ahead and see what is going to be coming up and kind of know how to base your expectations and your energy on what is going to be coming up that week. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and roll that for you. And uh, you know, I hope you have a fantastic week. I think that based on what I saw for the week and what I heard and what I read, I feel like this week is actually it like has the potential to be very transformative as we're in Virgo season right now. And I just hope that this reading helps you out above anything else, whether you decide to come and join my Patreon or not, which link is down below, whether you decide to come and join my Patreon or not, I hope that uh, this actually does, you know, provide some guidance for your week. And I love you so much, pumpkin. Please do not forget when you stand on your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. And let's get to it. Hello there, my beautiful pumpkins, and welcome to this first week of September. I know it seems crazy. We still have a few days left of August this week, but welcome to technically this week. This reading is going to carry us through the first week of September. So uh, I'm so excited. Y'all already know I love fall if that was not a given. Um, hello, leaves. Hello, everything my brand is. Um, I'm very excited. September is one of my favorite months of the year. Um, honestly, I think at this point in my life, I have learned to appreciate something about every single month. Like even when it comes to the months of summer, which are my least favorite, like I do fall in July, so I think that kind of like helps a lot. And then August, at least here where I live, it is very temperate. I don't find that it's been super, super hot. And I feel like this year we're getting a little bit of an early fall. So can't complain. Zero complaints. Uh, I'm just just happy to be here. So <clears throat> I'm very excited about the month that we're coming into. Now we are finally in Virgo season. I think I talked about this a little bit last week. We're finally in Virgo season. How are y'all doing? Because I feel like we are feeling it. <laughs> Virgo is the sign of health, wellness, daily routines. And I think many of us uh, are feeling some type of way about our routines. Either you've recommitted to a bunch of routines or you are feeling some type of way about the routines that you have or have not been introducing into your life. Um, at least every person I've talked to has definitely either been like super going 100% into their routines and feeling really good about it or 
it's been people feeling very upset and distraught about the lack of routines that they have. So across the board, everybody's stressed out about their routines or feeling really good is what I have found. So where are you? Are you feeling good about your routines? Is Virgo season treating you right? I do feel like I've had this very much like extra pull to clean my house. Um, yesterday I spent a lot of time cleaning actually. Um, and it felt correct. Uh, I feel like I got so much done yesterday. And I feel like Virgo season just kind of is that. But on top of that, we also have Mercury retrograde, which I do believe we are in the shadow period by now. And so communications are a little bit rough. We're having to move a little bit slower through the world. And we are having this happen in the sign of Virgo. So I will say that with it happening in a mercurial sign, this to me means that it's going to hit a little bit harder. Um, I feel like during Gemini season, for some reason, it wasn't as bad when we had a Mercury retrograde, but I feel like the sign of Virgo, because there is a lot of perfection mixed in, like Virgo is the definitely the sign that demands like excellence. And this sometimes if we're not prepared for excellence, it can lead to perfection. And so if our communications, if we're stumbling, if things aren't coming out as clear as we'd like, this can definitely lead to a lot of extra stress. So I would say just take it easy. Make sure that you're reading things twice. It doesn't mean that your life is over just because Mercury's in retrograde. Just, you know, make sure that you give yourself time to read over documents before you send that really important text or email and you should be okay. But in any case, let's get into this weekly. I do apologize. I know it's technically not late because these aren't supposed to go out until Monday. I've just traditionally tried to put them out on Sundays uh, just to be a little early, but I always feel a little weird when they come out slightly late, especially if they don't come out like on Monday morning. But um, I hope that I hope that y'all are having a good start to your week. I know that um, I definitely am. I actually woke up early today, which is nice. I've been really trying to work on that discipline, being disciplined enough, even though I work for myself to wait, make sure that I go to bed at a reasonable time and wake up at a reasonable time. So we're just going to go ahead and pull out the themes for this week. We're just using our, you know, we use this deck all the time. Black Moon Astrology, one of my favorites. <clears throat> Gosh, I feel like you can tell that I woke up not too, too long ago. My voice is sound in some kind of way. <laughs> um, I have been up for like an hour and 20 minutes though, but maybe it's because I haven't had any caffeine yet today. Oh, okay. That means that we are done shuffling. All right, so we have Uranus Genius. I actually love that for a Virgo season. We have First House, The Body. We have Jupiter Return Benefits. And then the Shadow Card of the Week. That does not surprise me at all. We have Venus Love. So very interesting. Very interesting. I'm trying to make sure that these are straight on camera, but okay. So beginning of the week, Uranus genius. I feel like even though we're in this Mercury retrograde period, what we always need to remember is that Mercury retrograde just means reinvent. It literally just means like it's a time period to take stock of that sector of your life and reinvent and or like let it transform because that's all that's really happening is we're going back we're looking at old patterns and we're doing them in we're doing it in a Virgo fashion which means we're going to be extremely thorough about it but I love that we have Uranus genius because we also have Uranus gosh I wish I had a current chart pulled up in front of me so I could tell you about this a little bit more I need to start making that a little more routine having a current chart with me when I do these because I feel like I could give so much more insight to the week if I had that um, I don't know why I haven't prioritized that but 
Uranus genius, Uranus is the sign of genius, but it's also the sign or the planet, not the sign, the planet of disruption. And we maybe have had a little disruption over the new moon in Virgo, which we're still very much feeling today. The new moon happened on Saturday. We feel the effects of that new moon for at least the three days before and after. So we're dealing with that new moon energy for almost a week. And Actually, it is about a week. Yeah. And Uranus genius, this to me states that early in the week, we're having a stroke of genius. We're having an opportunity present itself to us that feels just really divinely guided, really smart, um, really, it, it almost comes in very suddenly, though, like, it's like you need to write it down or you need to act on it immediately in order to figure out what you want to do with it. So if anything floats into your awareness and it feels inspired, don't let your mind do the thing where it talks you out of it. Like if you're feeling that hit of inspiration, I feel like many of us will go, oh, no, that's a terrible idea. Here's all the reasons I shouldn't do it. Instead, let yourself play with it. If if it feels that's something I would love for everybody to understand just in general in the world is if something calls to you and it gets your inspiration and your inspired action stirred up, it doesn't matter if it's going to be successful or not. And chances are more often than not, it will be something that's successful because it's something your soul wants to accomplish. And all you have to do is follow it. Even if it takes forever for it to see any kind of success, you're just required to follow it. So I do feel like we're getting something early in the week that goes about that, but we'll see when we clarify. Then we have the first house, the body in the middle of the week. This does not surprise me at all because again, with Virgo season, we're looking at these routines. We're looking at what we're doing in our day-to-day -day life. And <clears throat> for some of y'all, you may want to make some new commitments to your body. You know, you don't have to wait for January 1st to do that. If there's something you want to change and it's not about a weight loss goal or eating a certain way, it can literally be just committing to more movement, committing to more mindfulness, committing to more um, something to do with the physical vessel, just something you want to do for yourself. Like this Virgo season, I have committed to cutting coffee out and just replacing it with matcha and then hopefully having coffee as like a treat every once in a while because I've just realized that it doesn't really serve me the way that I wish it did. Um, I get like really jittery and anxious when I drink coffee and it's been something that I've drank for years and years and years and years. Um, but that's like, to me, a commitment. That's like a good example of a commitment to the body to make some kind of change to actually benefit my body versus take away from my energy. So that to me is like, very first house, the body. And especially if you're a Virgo rising right now, this is going to be a time period where you may feel way more recommitted to your body in a new way. But this also is, this can go so many ways. Like we can talk about it in an active way, a commitment to the body, but also when it comes to your own personal healing, um, we have to remember that we're not just floating heads. The body is an important part of that. So it could also just be listening to the body, the wisdom of the body. The body, I personally believe, holds all of the answers, like not only to the things that upset us, to the sabotage that we might partake in, the self-sabotage, but we actually can get so much wisdom out of the body if we're just willing to listen. Um, and that's like another topic for another time, but then coming into the end of, we end of the week, we have Jupiter return benefits and I want to clarify this one a little bit more before I speak too much on it because Jupiter return, this is always a time like in your own personal chart when you go through a Jupiter return, this is like when your dreams come true. This is when really good things happen for you. Um, I've studied a lot. I love long transitioning planets because I have such a huge family that's all older than me. I'm the youngest. And so I've had the opportunity to study multiple, multiple people's Jupiter returns, Saturn returns. And the Jupiter return with everything that I have gathered over the years is not only does it expand you and like move you in new and beautiful ways, it can expand your spirituality. It can expand your knowledge your higher learning and higher education or something that you will like feel fascinated by. It can also bring on wealth and new forms of abundance that you didn't see coming. So we'll look at that one in a little bit and see exactly what it's about. But then the shadow card of the week, we have Venus love. And 
I feel like this is just a reminder that you don't need to hate yourself through the process this week. Like, you know, if love is the shadow that's cropping up, what are the ways that we don't provide love to ourselves and to others? Now, I'm not saying we need to like simp for abusers or anything like that. But when it comes to, you know, don't hate your body through wanting to make commitments to it. Don't hate the ideas that come through your mind because, oh, no, I already have a million projects. I don't want another one. Don't like even if something really good is trying to happen for you, don't question that you're not worthy of it. If it's happening, it's meant to be there for you. So I do feel like there is this undercurrent this week of honestly, I heard the words like self loathing. And that's we don't want to do that. We're not here for that. So let's go ahead and clarify these cards. See what's going on. We're going to use the mystic Mondays tarot to do that and just see what is going on. Also, these cards are driving me bananas. I somehow shuffled them to where some of the cards are face up and some of them are face down. And I just didn't want to take the time to fix them before starting. So not going to lie, the cards are driving me a little bananas, but that's okay. I can fix them later. They're still going to work just the same. Okay. Spirit you help us to clarify the messages this week that we are receiving? What is going on this week? All right. So on today, beginning of the week, we have the devil and the princess of cups over Uranus genius. So this is interesting to me because this is almost exactly what I said is don't question whether something is going to be good or if you're going to be good at it or just follow what lights you up and inspires you because the devil will have you getting in your mind about all the ways in the past in which you failed and bestie it's it's all right like it doesn't matter if you have failed at something a thousand times failure doesn't even mean what we think it means failure is when you fall down and you choose to stay down but ultimately, failure, it doesn't even exist. We have the control and the power to decide not to. And whatever this is that's coming to you this week, whether it's like a new way of communicating with someone, whether it's an actual physical idea that you can bring into fruition, whether it's this way that you're going to crack the code on your own um, routines or just anything that comes to you early in this week that feels really powerful and like you want to make moves on it. Don't get in your head about why you shouldn't. Instead, let yourself feel that inspired action that is coming to you. Let yourself feel through that and allow yourself to imagine the best case scenario instead of imagining all the reasons why you can't. And then in the middle of the week with the first house body, we have seven of pentacles, 10 of pentacles. This is interesting to me because often these cards speak of material gain of some kind, but I also think for some of y'all, this is literally going to be like getting gains, like wanting to recommit to some kind of exercise routine. Not for everybody. Um, for some of y'all, this is also going to be just recommitting to your long term vision for yourself, for your life, for your body, because the Ten of Pentacles, it also is the card of long term goals, long term vision. And this is deciding not to do something again through that self-hatred, that self-loathing, but choosing to do something little by little over time that waters you, that takes care of you and nourishes you. Especially with the Seven of Pentacles coming out, we literally have this figure watering this tree and like basically tending to her body, tending to herself, tending to nature, which we are nature. So that's why I said to her body. But this is also very much about you tending to yourself. This is such a great thing to do during Virgo season. Virgo is also the sign of self-care. And this is such a wonderful thing to do is to recommit to yourself, decide the person you want to be and start acting in that way. And if you need any help, I didn't plan it that way. But my last podcast that went out um, this past week, it was also a video on my channel that went out. If you like, just play that. 
I do feel like it might give you some ideas. I didn't plan it in cord. Um, <clears throat> I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't plan it to correspond with Virgo season. It just happened to happen that way. And I feel like it was a really appropriately timed video um, on accident. <laughs> That's again, what happens when you inspire, when you follow inspired action. But I feel like if you're struggling to like create routines that really support you, I literally lay out my entire routine from morning to night in that video. And I talk about the ways that I've recommitted to myself and how much better I feel. So if you need some ideas, I would highly encourage you to check that video out or listen to the podcast if you don't want to watch the video. Um, it's literally the exact same thing, just in audio format. So, um, gosh, y'all, after this, I'm gonna need to go make myself a tea. I don't feel like I'm getting sick. But my voice sounds like I've been gargling rocks. Um, she sounds rough this morning. Uh, then we have death and the two of pentacles over Jupiter return benefits. Oh, okay. I was like, that's weird. Why do we have this like benefic planet with this kind of setup? And you know what it is, y'all? It's, oh, I love and hate this. <laughs> I love it because it really is the truth, but I hate it because it can be really difficult. It's not always easy. Um, and of course, we always want like the path of least resistance, which you can achieve if you are willing to let go. But you have death showing up here because death is the ultimate transformer. It is letting go. And during this time period, you are being asked during this week, you are being asked, what are you willing to let go of? And a really powerful exercise that I do believe could be really helpful if you're trying to figure this out for yourself this week is ask yourself what you benefit, how you benefit, like to give you an example, and this can be a hard exercise, like you have to be kind of radically honest with yourself, but ask yourself in the ways that you would like to change, but you self-sabotage, how do you benefit from that sabotage? And to like give you an example, um, I don't trigger warning. I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience with eating disorder. So if you don't want to hear that or that's triggering for you, please just like fast forward a few minutes. But um, trigger warning there. But I used to struggle really badly with binge eating disorder. Um, I went on basically two extremes. I started in anorexia when I was a teenager and then that developed into binge eating disorder with like purging, but not like people always think when you say purging, you mean like throwing up. And that was not what I did. I would purge by overworking out, overcompensating and working out, or, um, that's considered like a form of purge. And, um, or I would also just like go through bouts of starvation. And I did this for years where I was just really uncomfortable in my own body. I didn't know how to listen to my body's hunger and fullness cues. And I was constantly using food as a tool to numb all the time. And there's no shame in this. Like this was something I believe I had to experience to get to where I am today, which is a lot more health conscious. I'm very aware of my eating cues and I don't live by any kind of like strict food rule. Um, I just allow myself to like feed my body in the way that feels good. And that took years to overcome that for me. But the thing is, I had to ask myself at one point, even though I hated this so much, even though I hated this experience, what was it? How was it benefiting me? How was binge eating actually benefiting me? And number one, it's really easy to just not care about what you put into your body and to just eat. It's really easy to use food as a coping tool. It's, it's extremely easy. And because of that, at least for me, it was, I can't speak for everybody. It was very, very, very easy. It was an easy tool that I had easy access to. And that was probably the number one thing that came up for me is I benefited by not having to be disciplined. I benefited by being able to just kind of sit and do nothing because it was easy. And then I had to ask myself, what are all the ways that doing this doesn't benefit me? And the list was significantly longer on all the ways it did not benefit me. And though it was a very hard decision and it took a lot of consistency and discipline, um, 
I was able to eat not just through like my own sheer will. I also like talk to a therapist. I also like read a lot of really great books. Um, there was a lot that went into it. It wasn't just like one thing. Um, and I could cover that maybe on another, like in another, probably a podcast is what I would do it. And if any of you are interested in hearing more about that, but in any case, I had to be willing to let go of that version of self. I had to be willing to let go of, and not just that version of myself, but I had to be willing to let go of people in my life that also did that same behavior and not because they were bad people and didn't deserve love, but in order for me not to participate in that same way of doing things, I couldn't spend every waking moment with people that were also doing those things. And, you know, even now there are some people in my life that I still have relationships with that have similar behaviors, but I had to take a step back for a while and just really pay attention to me. Like your new life really will cost you your old life in a huge way. You have to be willing to let go of people that keep you stuck in the same cycle and not because they're bad or terrible or you don't have control of yourself, but it is a lot easier in a group mentality to keep doing the same things when like, it's almost like if you are, let's say you really struggle with alcohol for whatever, for whatever reason, no judgment here, judgment free zone. But let's say that you really struggle with alcohol as a substance you have to decide that you're not going to go hang out with your friends at the bar every night. Like that is something you would have to do for yourself in order to even start to overcome that. And for me, it was a very similar thing. I had to not spend time as much with people that didn't like care about what they were putting into their body or how they were doing it or just sitting in front of the TV for hours and hours watching seasons of shows and binge eating. So that's, that used to be just like my favorite thing to do. Um, and again, that's like a really vulnerable thing for me to share. I'm not trying to like pick apart anybody else who does those things and accuse you of having some kind of condition. But for me, I just, that was something I had to really prioritize myself and stop spending time in places with people that kept me doing those things. And same with like, even if it comes to like somebody that triggers you, maybe like for me, a huge trigger used to be family, any kind of family interaction would send me into a tailspin of binge eating. And so I just stopped talking to my family as much. And now I've been able to reintegrate as I have gotten better, but I had to take that time away. So your old life will cost you like your new life will cost you your old life. And you have to ask yourself what is worth losing so that you can benefit. And the two of pentacles says that you have to be willing to create more balance in your life. You also have to be willing to look at where you have a sector of your life that maybe is just like off the charts. Like um, a great way to do this. Gosh, do I have one with me? I don't know if I have one with me to show you. Um, sorry, I want to see if I have my book in here with me anywhere because I feel like it's just such a good... I know I sound far away right now. It's because I am. Um... It's such a good example of this. And I thought I had the book in here, but maybe I don't. Maybe she doesn't. Oh, no, it is in here. Sorry, this is loud. Um, okay, so this book I recommend it to y'all all the time. The Artist's Way. It's a good one. Um, we're almost done with today's reading. I'm sorry if it's a little bit long. But this book, oh, I need to go back and do this book again. It was so good. Uh, this is the workbook, though. But um, this is an old one of mine. But if you'll see this diagram right here, basically, you make this diagram and every dot, the closer you are to center, the less good you feel like you have like a handle on this area of your life. So we have work, play, exercise, spirit, romance, and friends. And as you can see, I had a huge excel in romance and spirituality, but I was doing little to no exercise. I was not really prioritizing play. I was not really doing a lot of work and my friendships I felt like were not really at their best. And so you can kind of see where my graph leaned very to one side, but this allows you to see where you don't have balance. And it's okay if your whole thing looks like a spiky tarantula, like everything is kind of like 
way in and like one is out. You know, it's okay if it it looks like a mess. This isn't a tool that's meant to make you judge yourself. This is meant to help you see where you feel like you are. If you have a really tight inner circle, this is a sign that you need to do like Jupiter and let yourself expand. Or maybe only your spirituality is really high, or maybe only your work ethic is really high and every other area is hurting. How can you expand that circle little by little? Um, and it's just like a really cool exercise. This is an old representation of what I used to feel like, like over a year ago. But I bet if I did that right now, I would actually have a much different looking circle. But in any case, really cool exercise. I hope if you try that out that it helps you. It's one that I love to do periodically when I'm like doing kind of like a life audit. But you're being asked to create more balance. That's ultimately what is happening now, especially before we enter Libra season next month or the end of this month or no, next month in September because um, we're not quite in September yet. But at the end of September, we'll be entering Libra season and you just want to pay attention to that. You know, we'll be, we'll be being asked to become a lot more balanced at that time. So if you kind of have an early jump on it, you'll be in good shape. But lastly, the shadow card. And then at the bottom of the deck, we have the tower. Ooh, Chile. Um, so you have to stop self-destructing. The tower is literally destruction and we have it paired with love. This to me is self-destruction. What are you, what are you doing in your day-to-day -day life that is creating self-destruction? You know, how are you talking to yourself? How are you feeding your mind, body, soul? How, these are the areas that you want to focus on. What is happening in these sectors of your life and how can you transform them? How can you become this new version of yourself? And it doesn't mean like, gosh, I think that's another thing I would always want to drive home for y'all is when you show up, sometimes you're going to feel guilty or unworthy in the beginning. And that's okay. It takes time for you to start to feel okay with it. Like recently, I've really taken a step back from making myself available all the time for friends. And that's something that I used to do constantly and I felt really good doing it. But recently it became something that didn't really feel good. And it was really scary at first. I was terrified that people would be mad at me for taking time for myself. But what I've learned is most of my friends are too busy with their own lives to really think about it. And on top of that, even if anybody has asked, they've been all very respectful of the time that I've needed for me. And that to me is like the sign of true, like mature friendships when you can give yourself that time and space and have those boundaries, but it might feel a little uncomfortable in the beginning. And for you, it might not be relational. It might be feeling like you don't deserve certain things in your day to day life, but do them even when you feel undeserving, you know, give yourself that at home facial, paint your nails, make yourself that a smoothie, you know, go on that walk, even if it feels like you don't feel like you deserve it, because over time, you will feel like you deserve it. And that is what I have for you this week. This was kind of a lengthy weekly, I think it's because I'm doing it at the top of the day. And anything I do at the top of my day is just like done to the nines. So um, I hope you enjoyed this chat. And I hope that this week actually really does treat you well. I hope you allow yourself the deep integrative healing that this week actually has the potential to bring to you and the real change that can actually be ignited right now. And I love you so much, pumpkins. Thank you so much. And please do not forget when you stand in your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.